Welcome to Medica Nova Wellness Studio. I'm Angelica Maria Koch with your educational videos about how to live optimal health and vibrant well-being as I continue to guide you step by step through an amazing and life transformative process empowering you to connect with your body and soul in a completely new way again. Welcome to the new year. I hope you had a sweet transition and a sense of renewal about yourself, your body and your external life. My intention for you all and for myself this year is to create a radical change of health consciousness. This channel is called Medica Nova Wellness Studio. What does Medica Nova mean? It means new medicine, which is a fusion of ancient proven health protocols married with the new scientific research. This is true new medicine. So this year I will guide you over the next seven to eight months through an amazing adventure of healing. While mainly focusing on the chakra system, which are the energy wheels within the body, with their metaphysical description and physical symptomatology, we will also focus on natural and effective healing protocols like homeopathy and some medical meditation techniques. Here we are really healing from the very core. I call this discovery series Radical Chakra Healing in the New World and these presentations will be very unique and one of a kind. So I really invite you here to follow these sessions by subscribing to my channel. So each month we will focus on or we explore a new chakra followed by a second session which will focus on healing related physical common ailments. You know, I usually teach this information at the University of New Mexico where I teach courses in homeopathy and quantum healing. So take this opportunity to learn about you know, optimal health and vibrant well-being in its very depths for free. Right? By the end of this discovery series, you will not be the same anymore, as by then you have established and explored not only a better understanding and relationship towards your body, but also about your soul and your energetic bodies. This year be radical with yourself and your healing. And I get the sense that this year will be the theme of the end of illusions and a year which requests from us to mindfully select really what serves our evolving lives and what doesn't anymore. It is a year of letting go and new beginnings. It is a year which marks the beginning of a new nine year cycle and it is a year which will bring many, many, many changes. Any new act of beginning requires a clean slate, so to say. It requires that you clean out your current inner and external terrain to set the stage for a new play to begin. The preparation phase here is very important and really needed. To create your radical dance in a soulful place, this video will explain to you that our cellular behavior is dependent on our and your participation in taking care of your inner and outer environment. And inner and outer environment, I mean the inner one with thoughts and emotions and your relationship towards your body and your outer environment, your surrounding. You can also read about this subject in my book, The Dance of Your Core Healing, Transforming Your Mind, Body and Soul in the New World. You will see it here in the background. Uh, but today, let's have a look at your energetic field, and which is your place of work and home. Our environment influences our cellular behavior as well as our relationship towards with ourselves. As we have entered one of the most important periods in human history with the opportunity to lift ourselves to a new level of consciousness right now that allows us to move toward healing, we are encouraged to radically participate in our environment with life-affirming and sustaining new ideas. Not only are we changing our position from experience life as a victim, by becoming the witness, the active witness of our stagnated belief systems and suppressed emotions. But also we are becoming aware that we serve each other as mirrors of the soul. So physical spaces contribute to the individual's identity and the way we respond and give back to our surroundings. 
Building in spaces hold memories of our personal experiences and can invoke us, oh my God, a flood of physical sensations and memories and emotions. Like visiting your parents' home or going into their garage and finding a box of childhood memories and items. You know, they all bring up dormant feelings. Can be hurts and wounds as well. Why? Because the heart registers this resonating frequency. There's a clear interrelationship between our physical energetic field and the energetic field which surrounds us. Today, alarmingly, we have lost our sensitivity to places with the heart and the soul. You know, we choose homes and apartments on the spectacular view or the convenience and amenity of the closest mode of transportation, right? It's not about anymore about the soul of the place. We are more tantalized by contemporary design and futuristic architecture than the actual heart of the home. Have you asked, asked yourself ever, who was the person who moved in my apartment before I moved in? Uh, you know, what is the story about the land where I built my house on? You know, just really tune into that. So the first step in sensing one's environment is waking up to the stupor of sensory numbness, which really dominates our culture today. Our attachment to places and objects defines our relationship to the present moment. It is almost impossible to stay in an objective mode relative to one's environment when we choose to feed more a possessive and a materialistic approach, particularly to external objects. Our home and personal space often puts forth the most resistance to change. I mean, this is the place where we really have a hard time because our attachments are so strong, you know, from memories and to photos, to furniture, to clothes, to, you know, a jewelry. It's like a giant memory bank, which is fully stocked, sometimes with warm and fussy family feelings, but also sometimes with negative and very violent experiences. So your home defines your soul as your soul defines your home. By now, I hope you can all agree now that the physical body is not just a mechanical device and the soul not this ethereal phenomena, but that both are interdependently related and that the existence of one is conditional on the existence of the other. Since the quality and resonance of one's inner and outer environment influences the manifestations of dreams and visions to cultivate a beautiful, a thriving garden within requires an external environment that freely and without restriction supports your inner growth. And this is very important right now. It's the beginning of a new year. And you know, we all have visions, we all have dreams, but we only can manifest them if we really clean out our slate right now, right? If we really make it shiny. And that means letting go of old attachments, either within as well as without. In a society based on excess productivity, corporate financial wealth and personal power rather at the expense of authentic power, you know, the importance of a sustainable and life-affirming environment today is often seen as a luxury or a diversion rather than a necessity. It's really important. And as a healthcare practitioner, I really, you know, can tell you and reassure you that the resonance of your environment becomes an essential requisite for your personal evolution and physical healing, especially for your physical healing. So there is now widespread consensus that a hospital's physical and energetic environment, for example, has a direct effect on the patient's outcome and recovery time. So for example, in a cardiology ward, when they paint the walls green, which is related to the heart chakra, which is green, patients seem to heal better because the heart chakra resonates with balance and love. Research studies suggest that a noisy environment of artificial lighting can disrupt the brain development 
in premature babies in hospitals. Alzheimer patients, for example, they really uh, resonate much better with uh, when they were given a private room where they have their personal objects. You know, their anxiety and their psychotic symptoms and their aggression calms down much more. Studies show that children with asthma are particularly sensitive to air pollution. Of course, we know that. But today, urbanization has an enormous impact on our health, particularly radically influencing the cellular behavior. So numerous studies have shown that children have an increased susceptibility when exposed to toxicity, especially during the growth years when vital structures are developed and neurological connections are established. And during the first years of a child's life, most of the development of the nervous system occurs and yet we expose our children to a tsunami and onslaught of toxins from mercury, lead, formaldehyde, carcinogenic substances, you know, from a, that environmental toxins to food to household chemicals. I mean, the list goes on. And then we expect our children yet to normally develop, which is impossible right now. So pediatricians of the American Academy of Pediatrics have established links between pesticide exposure and a range of modern day diseases in our children from reduced birth weight to ADHD, as well as to impaired mental that impairment. About ADHD, have a look at my previous video where I really uh, gave you some hints and information how to deal with that. So mounting evidence suggests that increasing physical and mental health problems today relate to human modified places like homes, school, workplaces, um, the industrial spaces, of course, parks, but even farms. So why not have some ecotherapy rather than taking your antidepressants on a daily basis? But your environment reflects and influences the vibration, the quality and the potentiality of your individual evolution. Just as your body creates the needed terrain for your soul to heal. So before we embark in healing our aches and pains all the time, start by looking around your home, your workplace, your loft, oh my God, in the interior of your, of, of your car. I mean, every time I pass by parking lots, I think like these are living trash cans. Go for it. Your closet, the places you stuff is too many material items, most of which are actually that irrelevant by now. Ask yourself, you know, what do I need in life right now at the beginning of this year, 2017? Do I really need this sweater, which I haven't worn in the last 10 years? Or, you know, God, can I maybe clean out all these yard sale boxes in my garage, which are piling up now? And do I really need 10 kitchen knives, right? Although by the end of the day, I really buy my food ready-made in the local supermarket. So be honest here. Maybe it's time to declutter and organize your life as well as your environment in order to be able to tend to your inner and outer garden, religiously, metaphorically speaking. What you thought you needed five years ago may not be what you need today. Take some time to sort through your cupboard, your drawers and your life. Can you release yourself from some of the old attachments that hold you back in order to move on? This is a very important sentence and really the core of this video. Can you release yourself right now from some of the old attachments that hold you back in order to move on. Think about what is truly important in your life through the elimination of bad habits and letting go of things which don't matter anymore. Be radical, be courageous and do it now. Be your own interior designer. Create a life environment, you know, which stimulates your senses again. Bring in some color. The release of old and lifeless items as well as old stagnated belief systems will heal you to the very core. I would like to finish this video with a beautiful mantra called Aung San Varhiguru. What does it mean? It means the dynamic living ecstasy of the universe is dancing 
within every cell of me. Let's do it again. The dynamic living ecstasy of the universe is dancing within every cell of me. I mean, this is the energy you want to create this year, right? In that energy, old patterns which are outworn cannot sustain itself anymore. They will have to fall away. Again, before we embark on the coming seven months discovery series of radical chakra healing in the new world, I wholeheartedly encourage you here to take the first step in cleaning out your inner and outer terrain. And you maybe want to think about maybe incorporating a mild liver cleanse. So have a look at one of my previous videos where I talk about smile with your liver. This is a good time to start a mild liver drink now. You have two weeks before the discovery series starts, so happy cleaning. To keep updated and follow this amazing series, I also invite you to become an active member to Medica Nova Wellness Studio by subscribing to my channel. And have a look at my website, medicanova.net, at the online academy, where I offer you amazing online courses in homeopathy and quantum healing. They're beautifully created and very affordable. And also you can contact me on my email info at mediconova.net or leave your comments below. So see you soon and I can't wait from here how great you felt by cleansing out your life literally, but do it mindfully. Till next time, much love. Mm -hmm.